Lord. Hallelujah. And all God's people said? All right. Let's wake up and get ready this morning. Very good. On this beautiful Lord's Day, we had a lot of rain yesterday. I hope you all got some. We got plastered really good. Had two storms last night come through our way and a light show and all those good things. Amen. Praise God. So we're glad you were safe from the lightning and thunder and hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some rain and, you know, and uh, your roof got a hole in it and, uh, you know, you won't drown. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Good to see all of you here today. We're starting a brand new study this morning and you don't want to miss this. All right. You don't want to miss out on this study. It's going to be about a six week study probably and we're going to be studying one of the Major Bible doctrines in the Bible. Major Bible doctrine in the Bible. It's one of the pillar doctors that we call the pillars of the church. Uh, the doctrine, the pillars of the church. And so, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to be starting a new series on Sunday morning messages on the ten pillars of the church. And they are the ten doctrinal pillars of the church. And we'll be taking one each Sunday morning. Uh, and that, and so I thought this would be good to get in Sunday school, and we're going to be taking a look this morning at the doctrine of pneumatology. You're going, what in the world is pneumatology? Well, it's new, starting, but it's spelled with a P, and then it goes into U. Uh, pneumatology, say that with me, pneumatology, and that is the doctrine of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Now, so we're going to be getting starting that today. You're not going to want to miss it. And it's going to be great as we go through this. Uh, it's going to introduce you to the Holy Spirit in a much deeper and greater way than you know. I mean, you think you know about the Holy Spirit, but you're going to find out there's a lot you don't know. And there's a lot you need to know about the third person of the Holy Spirit. So it'll be a wonderful study, interesting study as we get into it. So anyway, are we ready, Sister Carol? All right, here we go. Amen. And good morning to all of you that are watching us by way of Rumble this morning and Facebook as well. God bless you and thanks for tuning in with us here at the West Marion Baptist Church. We're glad you're here and tuned in with us and studying the Word of God in the Sunday School Hour. And our class is starting a brand new study today. Right today, you get right in on the very beginning. We're going to be studying the doctrine of pneumatology. I know that's a big word, but it's the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. And I think you need to know about the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit, the personality of the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. See, there's a lot to know about the third person of the Trinity. And by the way, it is not an it, it is a person. And so we're going to be looking at that. It's a major doctrine in the Bible. And it's one of the pillars of the church doctrines. And it's a word that I use. And it's not in reference to Catholicism or the Catholic Church. But it is one of the major ten cardinal doctrines of the Bible. And so we're going to be looking at that this morning as we start out in this wonderful study. Now I'll be reading the scripture passages on it. Because there's about a hundred of them just in this lesson. So there's no way I could get them all written out for you. Uh, page, you'd have about a ten page uh, outline this morning all right but you do have the references all right so hey download the outline get the study guide and get in here with us and you can always order later later today you can watch it later on rumble later and, and as well and also you can go on and, and order a cd or dvd version of this after this week wait till next week and they'll be available for you and so we thank you and we praise the Lord for that. Hey, good class this morning. Good group, more than I anticipated. So the Lord is blessing because you're, you're blessing the socks off the pastor. And you did that Wednesday night in the storm. God bless you for those that came out in the storm. Amen. I, you just thrilled my heart. And I had a wonderful time preaching because you were here. And so praise the Lord for that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today now. We, we come into a wonderful study here of one of the major, major doctrines in the Bible, the Word of God, and that is the Holy Spirit. 
A lot of people are afraid of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people uh, are scared of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people, most people, don't know about the Holy Spirit and his function, his duties, his ministry, his work, uh, everything that he has in the life of the believer and the life of the church. And so we're going to take a look at it this morning and so that we'll have a deeper understanding of this wonderful person and the personality of the Godhead, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Now, Spirit of God, it's your turn now to be our teacher and our guide. Teach us the Word of God. Bring us into illumination, understanding. Give us wisdom to apply the understanding. and Give us knowledge as we study it. And Lord, we always ask for your help this morning that you would put your anointing upon your servant in this hour. Anoint his lips and mind and heart. And everything that is said and done will bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we will lift up the name of Jesus and that you will draw all men unto yourself. And may we have a much deeper uh, understanding, uh, appreciation, and love uh, for the Holy Spirit. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Again, the Holy Spirit, the doctrine. It is not an it or a thing. He is a person. Okay? He is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is a person. And this is a major doctrine in the Scripture. And we have that in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. And I'll be calling these out for the sake of the audio audience as they listen or get an audio tape of this. And then we'll be reading some of those verses to you. Matter of fact, in Matthew 28, 20, 19, and 20, what did Jesus say? You go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them, here we go, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. So we see right there in the beginning, Jesus teaching us that the Holy Spirit is a person. All right, so we're going to look at that. So first of all, we're going to take a look this morning uh, at the personality of the Holy Spirit. And the personality of the Holy Spirit is shown in His names and by His names. And He has three major names in the Scripture. One is the first one you're very familiar with, and that is the Comforter. The Holy Spirit is the Comforter. This tells us about His personality. Uh, it means that He's one who comes alongside. He's one who helps us. Uh, he's also one who is called a lawyer. And, and He is our lawyer as He comes alongside to help us. And so we find this wonderful name that He is the Comforter. As a matter of fact, but the Comforter in Luke 14, 26, Jesus said, but the Comforter... All right, that's his name. We're introduced to him here, which is the Holy Ghost. See, let the Bible interpret the Bible. Somebody's reading and say, well, who's the comforter? Well, just keep reading, and the Scripture will tell you. He is the Holy Ghost. Now, notice some things, and we'll look at it later. He shall teach you how many things? All things. And he will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Now, that's why I pray every time we preach, I ask the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance the things that Jesus has said to me. And what has he said to me? His word. Every word that's in his book, he has said to me. But when I've got to preach three times today, I don't remember all of it. Okay? And so I have to ask the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance the things that Jesus has said to me. And any teacher here, let me encourage you to do that. In John 15, 26, Jesus again says, But when the Comforter is come, now here it is, even the Spirit of truth, he shall testify of me. He's going to witness of me. So you're beginning to see a little bit of some of his ministry and what he does. He's going to teach. He's going to testify. He's going to comfort. A second name that he has there, his personality, is that he is a guide. He is a guide. In John 16, 13, Jesus said, How be it when he, somebody stops right there and says, Okay, who's the he? Now remember, we're in the masculine gender here. When we speak of a he, the Holy Spirit is never referred to the, the, the feminine gender. Yeah, you understand that? The Holy Spirit is never referred to in the Scripture as a feminine, in the feminine gender. It is always in the masculine gender or at times can be used in the neuter gender like when Paul used it when he referred to, and that's in the King James Bible. And uh, the translators, I think, could have probably done a little better job with that in there rather than calling the Holy Spirit an it. 
uh, you know, because he's not an it, he's not a thing, you know, he, he's a noun, he's a person, place, or thing, he's a noun. But in the Greek text and language, a lot of times when they use nouns and pronouns, they use different words in reference to that, so then you got to get into the Greek and all of that stuff, so just he's always referred to in the masculine gender. And the Bible says that he, here it is again, the spirit of truth is come. Here it is, he will guide you guide you into all truth. This is why you hear me pray that sometimes. I'm praying this verse. See, when you pray, pray the scriptures. See, and these are what comes to my mind because I know he's my teacher. And Jesus said in John 14, he will teach me all things. And in John 15, he said, he will guide me into all truth. And Jesus said, why? Because he hears the truth from the one who is the truth. And Jesus said, I am the truth. And so we praise God, he shall, for he shall not speak of himself. See, there's a lot of people today that put such a, a, a strong emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Now, we don't minimize the strength of the Holy Spirit and the person, but he is never out in the front ground. He's always in the background. He is always lifting up and promoting the person of Christ. Always the Holy Spirit does, because he never speaks of himself. See, and when we start talking too much about the Holy Spirit and everything in reference to Him and we leave Christ out, we're getting the Scripture twisted and turned around. For whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. Now, who do you think the Holy Spirit hears from? God the Father and God the Son. And so that's so when any time we hear in reference of the Holy Spirit in the Scripture and the Holy Spirit is speaking and talking, you know that's coming from God the Father and God the Son, who is the first and second person of the Godhead, the Trinity. You see, and it's, it's amazing to me how there are preachers out there today and denominations and groups that do not believe in the Trinity. They are what we call non-Trinitarians. And they teach that doctrine. Well, you're going to get the doctrine of the Holy Spirit in the next four to six weeks here and realize that He is a person. He is the third person of the Godhead who makes up the Trinity, the triune God. Okay? Then there's a third name that, he's, that he's, uh, goes by and it's in reference to. And this speaks of his personality, okay, the person of the Holy Spirit. He is the intercessor. He is the intercessor. In Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, the Apostle Paul says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not we should pray as we ought. Now, you listen to what the Scripture is telling us? You think you know how to pray, and you don't. And some of you may be good prayer people, and praise the Lord for that. But again, the Word of God says, you don't know how to pray, as you ought. Now see, now of course, as man, you see, we don't like that. Now don't tell me I don't know how to pray. Well, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, writing here, says we don't. Amen. We, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what's in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And God knows what's in our heart, relays it to the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit knows what's for us, and He's interceding for us when we pray. It is wonderful. You know what I like about that? It takes a lot of pressure off of you and I. Hello. It takes a lot of pressure off of you and I when we're praying. And you don't know, you have, to, have to start worrying about what you're praying, how you're praying for. Just open up your heart and pray and let the Holy Spirit do His job. Amen? Amen? I'll tell you what, you, you, all of us in here could say, nobody knows me better than me. But there are three people that know me better than me. And it's called God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so, as sincere as we try to pray, and as, as much as we want to pray, as hard as we want to pray, and all those good, wonderful things, thank God we have the Holy Spirit there to intercede for us. So there we go. A little bit about his personality, the person of the Holy Spirit. He is a what, church? Person. He is what? Let's say it again. He is a person. Now remember that when you see it in the Scripture sometimes when it says referring to it, 
Speaking of the Holy Spirit, again, there's where they use the different Greek and the Hebrew and the translation of it into it and so forth, all right? And, uh, and, and then there, there are three names that introduce his personality to us. What is it? He is the comforter, he is the guide, and he is the intercessor. So let's I'll take a quick look at the intercessor here, all right? The intercessor of the Holy Spirit, all right? And I won't be reading the verses, but they're all found in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 28. But here we go. We are too sinful to understand what we really need. Now, you agree with some of this stuff, folks. It's okay to say amen. Because when we say amen, we're saying, that's right. We agree with that. That's the truth. And that's found in Romans 8, 26. That's why I put the verses down there for you. See, we are too sinful to understand what we really need. That's why we have an intercessor who is the Holy Spirit. Number two, the Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father for our lives. How I many of you believe that? All right, that's in 827 of Romans. All right, thirdly, as you and I submit to the Lord's will, then His will becomes our will. Romans 827 again. Fourthly, the Holy Spirit prays with us for the request we truly need. Romans 8, 27 again. So, thus our prayers will be answered and everything in our lives will work together for God's ultimate good. Romans 8, 28. That helps you kind of break down those verses there together. As you read them, you have a little bit more of an understanding with it. All right? So, we've looked at the personality of the Holy Spirit as shown by His names. Let's take a look at another aspect of His personality. The personality of the Holy Spirit is shown by His characteristics. So we're going to look at the characteristics of the Holy Spirit now. All right, the characteristics is another way He is shown this morning for us. Now you need to be taking notes, you need to be filling these in, because you're learning something today. Don't ever go out here saying, I don't need none of that because I know it all. Because you don't. I don't know it all. Fold your arms, fold your hands, ignore it, and think, well, I don't need to hear this because I know it all. No, you don't. Matter of fact, you're never going to know it all until you get to glory. And then, by the way, in the Old Testament, the Bible makes very clear, God says there are some secrets that I have you're never going to know. He's going to reveal to us what He wants to reveal to us and reveal to us through His Son and the Holy Spirit what He wants us to know even when we get to glory. And in reference to that in the Old Testament, there are going to be things in glory we are never going to know because they are God's secrets only to Himself and He's not going to reveal them. So don't think you're going to know everything. And if there's anything Baptists need help with, is the Holy Ghost. Because we've been afraid of it so long. We really have. And, and I can understand why. Because we, we like to take the Scriptures literally. We like to stay as close to the Scriptures as we can. And, and stay as open and honest and reserved as we can. And there's been others that have come on the scene and totally abuse it and misuse it, and therefore we've gotten afraid to even speak about it in the Baptist church or talk about it. Well, we're going to talk about it today, and the next several weeks we're going to learn something about it, all right? So we're looking at the characteristics. First of all, one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, He has a will. Did you know that? The Holy Spirit has a will. Now you need to write that down, A, or you're going to get behind, A. The self-same Spirit, I'm reading out of 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Now I won't be reading all the verses all the time, just the highlights of it. The self-same Spirit is dividing to every man severally as He wills. So in other words, the Holy Spirit has a will. Now in that chapter, of course, Paul is dealing with spiritual gifts. All right, so just so you don't say, we'll go around and say, well, I want that gift and I want that gift and I've got this gift and so forth and so forth and, you know, and I'm going to get it. No, you're going to get what He wills you to have. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the gift, and He wills whatever gift God wants because, see, He listens to the one who hears, tells Him the truth, and God says, okay, what I want for Miss Cindy, this is the gifts I want her to have, Holy Spirit, so you're going to give these gifts to her. So whatever gifts that you have, if you haven't self-manufactured them or self-proclaimed them, it is the Holy Spirit of God that gave them to you. Now you need to use them for His glory and for His honor and for service. And if you don't like it, then complain to Him. That's why a lot of times when we have somebody teaching and they don't have the gift of teaching, they're in the wrong place. 
They need to find another service in the church because they don't have the gift of teaching because the will of God didn't give them the gift of teaching. Most all of us have the gift of serving. All of us. Okay, so you got at least one right there. Amen. And by the way, the some of you that have that, since all of you have that gift of serving, we could sure use some help out here on Thursdays. We need some help. Okay? Just I threw that in for a commercial. All right, let's look at a second characteristic of his Holy Spirit. I want you to know also, not only does he have a will, he has a mind. The Holy Spirit has a mind. You see, that's why it can't be an it or a thing, because an it or a thing doesn't have a mind, but a person does. Let's read a little bit of the passage of that in Romans chapter 8, 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. And God searches the heart. God knows the heart. And therefore, then he knows what's in the mind of the Spirit. So we see the Holy Spirit not only has a, a will, he has a mind. Here's another great one you're going to like. You really need this one too. He has great knowledge. The Holy Spirit has great knowledge. That's see there in your outline this morning. All right? Now, we have several verses there. John 14, 26. John 15, 26. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 13. So I'm going to read what John 14, 26 says. All right? The Holy Ghost shall teach you all things. See, church, we're without excuse to not know this Bible. Because if you are saved this morning, you have the Holy Ghost living in you. And the Bible says he's going to teach you all things. Matter of fact, Jesus came along and told his disciples, he said, you need not that man teach you. So the Holy Spirit's going to teach you. This is part of his character. He has a will, he has a mind, he has great knowledge. D, in your little notes there, several verses again. Acts 1, 16, Acts 28, 25, Revelation 2, 7, and verse 11. He has speech ability. See, a person can speak. See, that's why he's not just a spirit floating around on a cloud. Amen? He's a person. He has speech ability. I'm going to read Acts 28, 25 for you. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Elijah the prophet. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet. Wait a minute, what? The Bible says that the Holy Ghost was speaking through Isaiah. So wow, the, the character of this person. He, he has a will, he has a mind, he has great knowledge, he has speech ability. Who do you think is talking to you when you think you, the Lord's talking to you? Now, he doesn't speak to you audibly, but in that still small voice, in your heart, in your inner being, and the Spirit of God begins to impress upon you and to press upon your mind. And then if you really want uh, him to speak to you verbally, then read the Word of God. And God speaks through his Word. Hebrews says, in times past, he spoke through the prophets and the fathers of old and the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his word, his son. So, wow, we got a, we got a willing, mind thinking, great knowledge, intellect, speaking, Holy Ghost. Another one, E, the, the, the sensibilities, the sensibilities of the Holy Spirit. How many of you all are sensitive here today? How many of you hurt at times? How many of you have been disappointed at times? How many of you have felt sorrow at times? How many of you have grieved at times? Why? Because you have sensibility that God built into you and gave you. Well, I got some good news to you. This person of the Holy Spirit has sensibility. So let's take a look at him a little bit. First of all, he can be grieved by the Christian. The Holy Spirit can be grieved by the Christian. Are you with me? Ephesians 4, 30 and 31 tells us, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. In verse 30, are you with me? The word grieve means to make sad 
or to cause sorrow or to become sorrowful. Do you realize that you and I can cause sadness in the Holy Spirit? That we can uh, cause sorrowful in his heart in the Holy Spirit? And, and how, how do we do that? Well, if you read verse 31 of Ephesians 30 and verse 31, it's because what happens, bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking come about us. And by allowing these sins in our lives uh, and it takes root in our hearts, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And we cause great sorrow to come to the Holy Spirit as a child of God. So just think about it. That's why you need to be careful what you say. Be careful what you do, what you act, because the Holy Spirit lives in you, the person, the third person of the Trinity, of the Godhead. And believe me, he's listening. And we don't want to grieve him and cause him to have a sorrowful heart because of it. Number two, he can be lied to by the Christian. The Holy Spirit can be lied to. Acts chapter 5 and verse 3. How many of you remember that story? Peter's in the church, and this wonderful, lovely couple had a piece of property. And they said, we're going to sell it for X amount of dollars, and we're going to give it to the church. Well, they wanted 10000 for it, and they got 12000 for it. So they brought in, uh, Ananias comes in, and he brings in and gives his offering of ten grand, and tells Peter, we've given you the the property of the price of the property and Peter under the influence of the control of the Holy Spirit of God because he's a person heard what Ananias said and Peter says uh, why has thou lied unto men you've not lied unto men but you have lied unto God the Holy Ghost and boom he fell dead Ananias was saved but he lied to the Holy Spirit Peter said you've lied not to me to man you've lied to the Holy Ghost and boom, he dropped dead right there in the church service. Revival's about to break out in the church of Antioch. Here comes Mrs. Sapphire, just got back from the beauty parlor. Got a manicure, hair all done up, really nice, comes walking in, comes up to Peter. Didn't even see her husband being carried out by the pallbearers. Amazing. Tells Peter the same story. And he said the same thing to her. Why has thou lied? You have not lied unto men, but you have lied unto the Holy Ghost. The same Paul bears that you just missed passing by with your husband are coming to get you, and boom, she fell dead. And the Bible said great fear came upon the church, and revival broke out. Why? Because two believers lied to the Holy Spirit. So what's that tell me? Better be careful who you lie to. First of all, you shouldn't lie at all. Amen. So be careful. There's severe punishment. Severe. <laughs> uh, here's a third one. He can be quenched. The Holy Spirit can be quenched by the Christian. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. The Bible says, quench not the Spirit. Now, here, here's a, this happens a lot of times in the church. You get brothers and sisters that are serving in the Lord, and they're, they're playing, and they're teaching, and, you know, and just especially with new Christians, babies. Man, they're excited. They're, they're thrilled to death. They've got saved. They're on fire for the Lord. They want to do anything and everything. I don't care what it is. They're ready to run out of the church and charge hell with a squirt gun. I mean, you know, and everything. With, and they're bulletproof and everything. And they got such zeal. And, and they're excited. And all of a sudden, here comes some old saint that's been saved 30, 40 years. It's lost their joy and lost their uh, serving the Lord. And they throw a bucket of cold water on this new believer and quench the Holy Spirit. Or God's doing something in the church. And there's a great move going on. Don't be a quencher. And that happens. You've seen it happen here. And a lot of times it happens by the least person you'd expect. And it happens. So we need to be careful because he's sensitive. He's very sensitive. Some of you are very sensitive. Try not to be too sensitive. Because when you get too sensitive too sensitive, you get offended by everything. And the Bible says, great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace have them that love thy law, which is the scriptures, the word of God, and nothing shall offend them. So, 
be like Robert Conrad in the old days in the Ever Ready Battery, I dare you to knock it off. You remember that commercial? See, get the chip off your shoulder. Don't be too sensitive, okay? Amen. All right, well, that's the three concerning us. Now there are three concerning the lost. Number four, he can be resisted by the unsaved. The Holy Spirit can be resisted by the unsaved. Acts 7, 51. All right, number five, he can be blasphemed by the unsaved. Matthew 12, 31. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Whenever someone contributes the work and in the ministry of the church or whatever the work and contributes it to the work of the Holy Spirit and it's not the work of the Holy Spirit, it's the work of the devil, the work of Satan, you have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. You can go read it. It's there in the scriptures. You need to be very careful with that. The unsaved also, number six, he can insult the Holy Spirit by the unsaved. Hebrews 10, 29. Don't have all those verses. I just have the reference because like I said, there would be a lot of them. So that's looking at his sensibilities as the intercessor. Well, we're going to continue on because we're looking at the personality. The personality is shown by his names. We've learned already. The personality is shown in his character. Thirdly, the third personality trait of the Holy Spirit is shown in his abilities. So you're learning that about his names. You learned about his character. Now let's learn a little bit about his abilities. Okay? First of all, the Holy Spirit, he teaches. We've already mentioned that if you remember that. John 14, 26. The Holy Ghost shall teach you how many things? How many things? How much is all? So you see, we're without excuse. No excuse for the child of God, the believer. The Holy Spirit's living with inside of you, saying, I just, I don't understand the Bible. I don't understand the scriptures. No, no. That's actually a cut down. Because the Holy Spirit's going to teach you all things. And the Holy Spirit's going to bring to remembrance the things that God has said to you. Well, I don't know what God has said to me. Well, if you say that, you haven't been in the Word. Because when you're in the Word, you're going to hear what God says. Then it's the Holy Spirit's job to illuminate you to give you illumination, that's to give you understanding of what you've read. That's why when you, when you read the scriptures, you get ready to read it, whether it's a devotional or your nighttime, bedtime, morning time, whatever, before you start, always ask the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity that lives inside of you, to guide you through truth, to teach you truth, and by all means, give you understanding, that's what illumination is, of the scripture. And he will. And then once you gain that understanding and that illumination, then ask him for wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to apply the understanding that you just learned. Okay? So what does he do? He teaches us. That's part of his ability. Another ability, he guides us. Romans 8, 14. He guides. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... They are the sons of God. There's another good way of knowing whether you're saved or not. Because if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, then you are a son and daughter of God. So we're to be led by the Holy Spirit, that he has that ability. A third one, see there, he commissions. He commissions us. Acts 13, 4. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed. Holy Ghost is going, to see, is going to commission you. And we've all been commissioned by the Holy Ghost. To do what? To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We've been all commissioned to go and make disciples. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world or the end of the age. See, the Holy Spirit's got a lot of work to do, doesn't he? He's a busy guy. Matter of fact, he's doing more work than the other two. See, because Jesus, see, when he died on the cross and he said it is finished, he finished his work. And went back to glory 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he also makes intercession for us. So the Holy Spirit's got a, a great deal of work on him. No problem, he can handle it. You know why? Because he's God. Ah, wonderful. All right, notice what else. We've learned some of these. He intercedes. Romans 8, 26. The Spirit itself maketh intercession. E, he commands. These are, these are his abilities. In Acts 28, 29, you remember the, this, what was going on in Acts chapter 8? Somebody was holding a revival meeting. Who was one of them that was holding a revival? Was who? Philip. Philip was holding a revival meeting. And the Spirit of God said, go. He commanded him to go, and he was to meet up with a guy coming back from Jerusalem from worship that lived in Ethiopia, which is in Africa. And he happened to be the Ethiopia uh, eunuch uh, 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 representing the queen. And he said, you go and join yourself to that chariot. And the Spirit of God lifted him up, moved him, and the next thing you know, the Ethiopian says, hey, man, where'd you come from out here in the middle of the desert? How'd you get here? Did the, did the, did, did the Star Trek, uh, you know, the Enterprise beam you? No, the Holy Spirit lifted me and brought me here. And he's running alongside the chariot, and he joined, jump on board, and he's reading the book of Isaiah. He's reading Isaiah chapter 53. And, he, and, and Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? See, no, he didn't, because see, he didn't have the Holy Ghost. He said, no, I don't, unless some man... So Philip begins to explain to him uh, the, the passage of Scripture about the Lord, that he was wounded for our transgressions and so forth, that he was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our sin was laid upon him, and he was led to the slaughter of the lamb, without, without, you know, and so forth. And, he, and then Philip, and he leads him to Christ. He says, hey, there's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Nothing. They go down in the water. He baptizes him. He comes up out of the water, and Philip's gone. Whoa. I love it. Now, I believe we'll be able to do those things in the millennium. Those of us that are saved, born again, and we're living in the millennium. We're going to rule and reign with Christ. Uh, I've asked the Lord to let me continue to do what I'm doing right now for a thousand years in the millennium and travel the world preaching the gospel. Never get tired. Won't need a motorhome. Won't need a fifth wheeler to pull behind the truck. Won't need to make reservations on airlines. Won't have to worry about time, traffic. Close out the meeting here, and I got another one starts in just a few hours or tomorrow morning. <laughs> hey, Pastor, how are you? Ready for the revival meeting? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be great. Have energy to, to plus and, and proclaim this book to literally thousands in the millennium. It'll need to be saved just like you and I. And how are they going to get saved? Same way you got saved. All must come through the blood. It's not through the fire. It's not through this, as George played last week. But it's all through the blood. It's putting their faith and trust in the person of Jesus Christ. Be much easier, of course, in the tribulation. I mean, in the millennium. Won't have all this we got going on. Jesus is ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. The King of kings is here. The Lord of lords is here. Oh, it's going to be fabulous. So not only does it command, he restrains. He restrains. Now get this. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, God says, My spirit, speaking of the Holy Spirit, shall not always strive with man. You understand that? Those of you that are watching and listening, there'll come a time when God tries to speak and talk to you and the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart and you continually to resist and say no. God says there'll come a time when His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will not always strive with your spirit. There'll come a time that you'll cross God's deadline. There'll come a time when Amos said, prepare to meet thy God. There'll come a time in three times in chapter 4 and 3 of Hebrews. The writer says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. 
There'll be a time when you harden your heart so much that he often being reproved and hardens his heart shall suddenly be cut off and without remedy. Don't get a hard, cold heart. The Holy Spirit restrains. Last one there, seventh, I think, right? Number seven. G, he loves. Oh, in Romans 15, 30, the Bible says, for the love of the Spirit. So what are his abilities? He teaches. He guides. He commissions. He intercedes. He commands. He restrains. He loves. Well, hey, man, what's the Lord's job? He saves. <laughs> he saves. All this won't do you any good until you get saved. So you got to get saved first, then you can have all these things and understand these things. So I hope you're getting a little better understanding of the third person of the Trinity today. You can see he's got quite a bit of responsibility and quite a bit of work. Matter of fact, again, now we looked at three, looking at the fourth personality. We're looking at the personality of the Holy Spirit is shown by unusual grammar of the New Testament. Now, we're not going to go into that because it's what I was telling you about in Greek and the grammar. They used the word it and so forth. And again, that's just explain uh, whenever the Holy Spirit uh, uh, duties is being revealed, the exceptional to the grammar rules indicates that the Bible views of the Holy Spirit as a person. And we have to refer to that. So it's not an it. He is a person. Okay? So understand it. All right. Well, B, in our study guide this morning, as we're looking along at it. All right, everybody ready to go to B? We looked at A, and what is A? The Holy Spirit is a person. So we looked at four areas of his personality, okay? B, the Holy Spirit, here it is, is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Come on, I need some amens on that. The Holy Spirit is God. Now, I don't know how far we'll go. We've got a, couple, uh, less, a few left here, so we'll get started in it right off the bat. The divine names of the Holy Spirit show that he is God. His divine names show that He is God. No less than God. I'm sorry for those that do not believe that or accept that or receive that. And those that do not teach this doctrine are wrong in their doctrine. They are in error of their doctrine. That's why in 1 John 1 and John 1 and John 1 uh, John 1.1, 1, 1. in the beginning was the Word, Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, in the JW Bible, it says, and the Word was a God. That implies that there are other gods and other deities. That's false scripture. Okay, And in verse 14, it makes it very clear. And the Word, the same Word we learned in John 1, 1, and the Word was what? God. And in verse 14, and the Word, Logos, became flesh. That's His incarnation. And dwelt among us. Thou shalt call His name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. And we beheld His glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Why full of grace and truth? Because you're saved by grace, because Jesus is the truth. All right, number two. So, A, the Spirit is called God. The Spirit is called God. And this will be our last one for today, and we'll pick up next week. All right, Acts 5, 3, and 4. I remember I was telling you a story earlier about Ananias and Sapphira. Here it is. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Now remember, now he's calling him Holy Ghost here. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Peter referred to the Holy Ghost as God. And he said the same thing to Sapphira. So the Holy Spirit, we're going to look at uh, three of his divine names next week, or two more after that. Then we're going to look at his divine attributes, and we'll look at them. And then we'll be get ready to move into the next one. And by the way, I'll save it for next week. The next week, we'll, after we finish this, we'll get started into the Holy Spirit's past and present work. His past work and his present work. 
And by the way, so we praise the Lord for that. Amen. And so we'll take a look at that. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this wonderful study of this doctrine of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity that we're going to get into and dig into and learn more about him, his personality, his abilities, his character, his duties, his responsibilities, his past work, his present work, his future work. Lord, we're going to be, it's going to be an exciting study as we study the Holy Spirit of God. And Lord, our prayer is, is that every believer in here will, will have a deeper understanding of the Spirit of God, will have a deeper appreciation uh, for the Spirit of God in their life as they begin to see His work in ministry. They'll have a deeper love for the Holy Spirit uh, as we move on in this study of the Holy Spirit of God. So, Father, as always, we will pray that you will certainly give us, uh, your Spirit will give us illumination, understanding, and then wisdom to apply it. And, Father, we thank you for it, and we thank you for the precious Holy Spirit in our lives. What a wonderful, beautiful gift you have given to us. Not only did you give us the gift of everlasting eternal life, but you gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit of God. And we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And praise the Lord.